Hi, this video I'm going to talk about where, where, what signs there are that you're with an abusive partner. So these are the 10 signs that you're being abused within your relationship. So if there's any one of these 10 signs, then you want to think about cutting and running from the relationship. Okay, firstly, the person you're with blows hot and cold. So one minute they love you, they think you're great, they think you're the, the God's gift to them, and the next minute, the very next minute, if you're doing no, nothing of your own fault, you're the worst, you're awful, you're rubbish, you know, and all these names come out. So one minute you're fine, you're okay, and the next minute without any warning, you're uh, the devil incarnate, basically. So the first one is that the person blows hot and cold with you. That is a sign that you're being abused. The second sign is they offer no genuine apology for something they've done or something they've said, which they know is horrible, they know is awful, but they offer no genuine apology. Now, they may offer an apology, but it's usually an apology to try and be on OK terms with you or to get something from you. It's not a genuine sorrowful apology. They're not genuine. There's no emotion there. There's no real desire to be sorry and really feel sorry about what they've done or what they said to you. So that is the second sign that you may be being abused in your relationship. Thirdly, they blame you for everything. Nothing is their fault. OK, so things happen and it's your fault. Everything is your fault. If the money's gone wrong, it's your fault. If, if something happens, a friend's upset, it's your fault. Everything in the relationship is your fault. Never their fault. They can never take any responsibility for things that uh, anything that goes wrong in the relationship. It's always your fault. It's always the other person's fault. So that is another sign you're being abused. Number four, they never stand up for you in front of their friends or their in-laws. So, or, or your in-laws rather. So their parents. So let's say you're married to somebody and um, they, every time you're with his or her parents, they um, have something against, they might have something against you. And instead of uh, standing up for you, they uh, join the parents and say, oh yes, mum and dad, you're absolutely right about my partner. And this is a sign of you. If the person you're with cannot stand up to their own parents when they're with you, they're not worthy of you, okay? They are abusing you. Yeah, the person's got to be willing to stand up against their own parents in relation to you, okay? You know, it's, it's, otherwise it makes it very, very difficult because one of the hardest things, particularly for men who have mother-in-laws, it's very, very hard for a man to say to his mother-in-law, look, I don't like this. Because he's taking on three people, you see. He's not taking on just the mother-in-law. He's taking on his wife and he's taking on his um, mother-in-law's husband, his father-in-law. So he's got to fight three people. This is the problem. So as a wife, you have to stand up for your husband when he's being attacked by your mother. I know you won't feel like doing that and it'll be hard, but you need to do that. Because otherwise you do not love him. OK, that's the, that's the bottom line. Anyway, moving on. Number five, they'll hit you and think it's trivial. So they might be sorry that they hit you, but it's, it's never, again, it's never real any, any heartfelt sorrowful over hitting you. So they will hit you and, and to hell with you if you hit them back. Oh, no, ooh, don't do that. But if they hit you, oh, that's all right. It's, it's just trivial. They may be sorry, they may feign sorrow, but they're not really sorry for hitting you. You know, at the end of the day, your human body is very special. It's very, it's like a temple, yeah? So if someone hits you and smacks you and scratches you, right, it's really bad. It's a very, very bad thing to do. Whether they're ill or whether they're well, it's very bad. And if you don't get any sorrowful apology for their behaviour, it's very, very, very bad. And that person is abusing you. Right, moving on. Number six, they'll take for granted your emotions. So if you start being emotional, they'll say, what a crybaby, what are you being emotional for? You know, man up, woman up, you know, get you've got to be strong and you've got to hide your emotion. I don't want to see you crying. Well, what apathetic is that? A oh, man, full grown man or woman or whatever's crying. OK, this is particularly true of woman on man abuse, where the woman is the abuser. And the man is, is crying because something's really bad in a relationship. She said, oh, goodness, I don't want this. Oh, goodness. Oh, man up, be a man. You know, it's, it's, it's abusive. OK, I, I agree that a man should be crying over every little thing. OK, in a relationship. 
But sometimes things are bad and he needs to get let out his emotions. Okay, moving on. They'll take more from you than they are able to give. So they'll expect more from you, but they won't be giving to the same amount in the relationship. This is abuse, okay? If somebody's in a relationship with you, they need to be giving as much to the relationship as you are to the relationship. If they're not, that's that's bad. It's true that maybe you let them off because if, if the person you're with is, is mentally ill, you might let that person off uh, there because they can't always necessarily be able to give as much as you give. But in general, when you've got two healthy people in a relationship, two people are supposed to be giving as much to each other as to the other one, okay? Number eight, they'll isolate you from family and friends, okay? So they won't want you to be in contact while you're with them, with your family and your friends, okay? They will make it very difficult for you to contact your family or friends. And then they'll say, well, I didn't stop you from contacting them. But in reality, they did, you see, because they make it very ridiculous. As soon as you get your phone out to ring your mum or your dad or your friend, it's, oh, why are you ringing that? It's this kind of abuse, okay? it becomes a, a problem because they'll say, oh, well, you could have rung your dad, you could have rung your mum, you could have rung your friend. In reality, you couldn't. You're not allowed. That's the fact of the matter. When that's happening to you, you're being abused. OK, so that is, is another one. Number nine, they'll spend money that you both don't have. So he, the person will either spend your money or they'll spend a joint amount of money that you just don't have. They have no clue about the budget, about how things have got to be managed and they'll just spend it and you get into debt, yeah? And you spiral out of debt, then when you when you get into debt, you get blamed for the debt. That's part of the abuse. You get blamed for the things that have happened while you've been with that person. So that you get uh, blamed for it, okay? And number 10, they take you for granted. So all of the things that they can't do that you can do and, and uh, adding to the relationship, they just take it for granted. It's just, Assume that you just go and do that. You just go and do those things. There's no thankfulness. There's no uh, proper appreciation for what you've done or, or, or how you've been. No appreciation at all. And again, if you see any of those uh, signs, please take it from me. Just cut and run. Get out of the relationship immediately. Okay, thank you for watching.